Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church for this, the 15th Sunday after Trinity. Our liturgy shall be divine service, setting four, is found on page 203, following our opening hymn, Hymn 700. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? 
But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered here to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore give you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Take us. 
O Lord, we implore you, let your continual pity cleanse and defend your church. And because she cannot continue in safety without your aid, preserve her evermore by your help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the 15th Sunday after Trinity is from 1 Kings chapter 17. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to this gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The epistles from Galatians chapters 5 and 6. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, and being one another. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone, and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We rise to the Holy God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 
sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. Begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn.
the supply of Lysol disinfecting spray. Jesus gets us down to very basic things in his list. What you will eat, what you will drink, about your body, what you will put on. And he dissolves those anxieties, those worries, by saying, is not life more than food? in the body more than clothing. This is one of a rather long list of rhetorical questions in this particular lesson. Jesus is asking you, his hearer, a question that you already know the answer to. It's one of those ideal times, whether school or confirmation class with the eighth graders at 1.30 later today. <laughs> I know this one. I know this one. Of course, life is more than food. Of course, the body is more important than clothing. And so Jesus gives us some examples of how to chill. How to be at rest. To be still and know that He is God. Look at the birds. Right here, he's not saying, look at the birds with your sights and be sure to lead them so you hit your target. No. He's saying, watch the birds. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and let your heavenly Father feeds them. And during the right hunting season, by them, your good Lord feeds you. But they're not worried about their Roth IRA. Are you not of more value than they? Of course. Jesus knows his rhetoric. He invented it after all. He's arguing from the lesser to the greater. If his eye is on the sparrow, I know he's watching me. And which of you by being anxious, by being worried, can add a single hour to a span of life. It's not the best literal translation of verse 27, but it does get the point across. The word that is sort of translated hour here is the word cubit. Yeah, from here to here, as in the days of Noah, about 18 inches. But in context, it could mean a span of time or a span of length. We do know that our worry will not make us taller or shorter. It will not extend our life. You cannot worry so much that you end up with 26 hours in the day or eight days in the week. In fact, God forbids such things. It would overturn his good order. Our anxiety, our worry, may often have a legitimate cause because of something or someone very dear and important to us, even love. But doesn't it end up being a waste of our time? And why are you anxious about clothes? Jesus says, clothing is not something to be worried about. Very interesting. Consider the lilies of the field. We're used to hearing it translated as lilies, but there's a variety of flowers that could qualify for this Greek word. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Flowers are gorgeous, especially Indian paintbrush in the mountains. But they're very chill. They don't do much. But that's not the lesson our Lord Jesus wants to learn from the flowers of the field. He doesn't want us to not work. He wants us to not worry. Consider, no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and worry. Worry 
means that you're not trusting God. That's the bottom line. For a moment, you do have another God in whom you trust, and that is whatever bad you will think happen if what you're concerned about goes south. The Lord cares for the little birds of the air. The Lord cares about the lilies, the flowers of the field. You're more important. The Lord loves you. He died for you. He rose for you. You are far more important than these temporary creatures. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? And there, everything comes to its fruition here. Worry and anxiety or a lack of faith, a lack of trust in the good Lord to provide us what we truly need. And what do we truly need? Our daily bread. Everything to support this body and life, even unto eternal life. And has not the Lord provided all of that in rich abundance? There's more about the time scheme and the schedule of delivery to come. Grass is even less important than flowers and birds. It does not last forever. But the word of the Lord does. Therefore, therefore, this word at the beginning of verse 31 is a double therefore. Because Jesus is trying to get us to focus on the idol of our worry versus the one true God who loves us in his son Jesus Christ. And so Jesus himself tells us, Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Why? The Gentiles seek after all these things, and you are not like them in this regard. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Again, you shall have no other gods. We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Seek first the kingdom. All these things will be added to you as gift. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself, sufficient for the day its own trouble. We sometimes forget what is nearby. If you have a copy of the Lutheran Study Bible with you, or as you listen to this or watch this, you'll notice on page 1591, you've got all of the Bible verses in red, including today's Holy Gospel. Over on the left side, 1590, you will see all of the Bible verses in red, for we are in Matthew chapter 6, the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. And what do we see over on page 1590? Same chapter as today's reading, the Lord's Prayer. And a word that is in common with this reading, and one of the very important readings over there. You already know this Bible verse. You have to memorize Matthew 6, verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Do you see the connection? The Lord delivers on a schedule. He gives you his gifts in their proper time. He will return on the last day whenever he decides the last day is. But in the meantime, he will deliver to you your daily bread, daily, not day old bread, not bread weeks in advance, not the day before like the wilderness man, but give us this day our daily bread. 
We don't pray, give us this week our weekly bread, for Jesus intended his prayer to be a daily one. We don't say, give us enough bread this Easter to last us until Christmas. No, that would be silly. Could you imagine the storage space in your pantry that you would need? The Lord cares about you daily. And daily our Lord gives you your daily bread. He gives you his word. He gives you himself. Forgiveness, life, and salvation. No, we cannot serve two masters, nor should we ever try or want to. When we realize that worry and anxiety is literally a waste of time, we remember our Lord's command to pray and also his promise to hear us. Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Life is more than food. The body is more than clothing. You are so much greater than the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, and the grass of the field. Jesus died on the cross and rose again to prove it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, be gracious to us, your baptized children, where temptations and anxieties surround us. Gladden our souls with the good news of your Son's perfect life and sacrificial death for our salvation. Strengthen us in the faith and fill us with your Spirit, that we might trust in you for all things temporal and eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, show your abundant mercy to all those whom you have called to preach Christ and Him crucified. According to your gracious will, grant faithful pastors to all vacant congregations, and restore to service those pastors without a congregation to serve. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant opportunities for honest and faithful labor to all, especially to the unemployed, and give us all contentment and joy as we carry out our daily tasks. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant wisdom to the President, Congress, and the Supreme Court of the United States, to the leaders of our states and localities, and to the rulers of the world, that they would seek peace, promote life, and protect the weakest among us. Guard and protect those who serve in our armed forces and emergency services, that they may serve with integrity and return home safely. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give ear to our prayers for the sick, the suffering, the lonely, the shut in, the depressed, the dying, and all those in any kind of need. Lucille, Nancy, Evelyn, Carolyn, Patricia, Arvin, Rosalind, Sharon, and Melissa and Paul. Be merciful and gracious to them and strengthen them in their trials. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant that all who partake of your Son's body and blood in the fellowship of this altar today would do so in repentance and faith, and to their abundant blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, according to your will and in your time, you call your children to rest from their labors. Receive our thanks for those who have gone before us in the faith, and grant that we, who walk as yet by faith, may join them in their holy rest until that day when you raise us incorruptible and immortal. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The live stream of this service will be concluded this time. We encourage you to conclude the service by praying the Lord's Prayer with your families. As you are in need of pastoral care, we encourage you to call the church office to make an appointment for the sacrament with one of your pastors. Peace be with you.